he might just he might just pimp slap people in in public. But bro, I will not be surprised if anybody says anything to him, he pimp slaps someone at those at those summits. Because because if Kamala went up against say Gavin Newsom or any of these far more interesting candidates, she'd lose. The greatest political comeback of all time. Hands down. The greatest political comeback of all time. You see, people live in a bubble. And people's first port of call is how does it affect me? So yes, I was wrong. I thought Kamala would win based off of people like Trump is too dangerous, he's too wild, he's said too many crazy things. But that is from me as an outsider. Because this is really about the demo bricks, aka the Democrats, but I'm going to call them the demo bricks because they are bricks. You have to feel the pulse of the nation. So forget, I'm, I don't live in America, so I'm looking at this globally. I'm looking at perception. I'm looking at perspective. I'm looking at it at like on a macro level. This ain't about the macro level. It is about a macro level to an extent, but it's really about the micro level. For that family, in that state, in that community, will my policies or will what I'm doing help them or hinder them? I'm a father of a family. I've got four kids, I've got my wife. I don't care whether my, the president insulted Puerto Rico. I don't care whether he insulted black people. I don't care whether he insulted transgender. I don't care whether he's for or against abortion. I don't give a damn. My thing is, with what you're doing, are you going to maintain my job security? Are you going to reduce the price for groceries? So make it more affordable for, for groceries? And am I going to be and I'm going to have enough money left over so we can have more holidays. I can do stuff with my family and take my kids to the best possible schools and give them the best possible education. As a father, my priority isn't about what to say about Latinos, what to say about blacks, what to say about women, what to say about transgender or gays. That's not my priority. My priority is my family. <laughs> and what the Democrats fail to realize is fill the pulse of the nation that you fail to Listen to the common people that for the last four years, for most of those regular families, the Biden administration wasn't it. And knowing that, you had to do something radically different. So for Trump, on one hand, you're like, yeah, you know what's anti-Trump, he's too crazy. But the other hand is, things were better under him. So despite everything he said, despite all the stuff that has been said about him or how dangerous he could be, I don't care. My first priority as the man of the house, or shout out to the single mothers out there who have to raise that child or those children by yourself, your priority is your family. Your priority is, is the economy. And this is what people have been saying is the economy, the economy, the economy, the economy, the economy. Forget race. Forget sexism. For, forget wars. Forget Ukraine. Forget all this stuff. How do you affect me? and my family, because my priority is the well-being of my family. Because we'll get to why the Democrats are crazy, but let's just stick with Trump first. It's, 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 it's a W. It's a W. I said it before my lab and I'll say it again. 50 years from now, 80 years from now, Trump will be remembered. Because Trump will be remembered, for better or for worse, it doesn't matter, he'll be remembered as having one of the greatest impacts on politics that the world has ever seen. That MAGA movement and what he's done as a populist has reshaped politics, completely reshaped politics because America has never seen a political figure like him. So it's one thing he got presidency the first time, insurrection, convicted felon, mainstream media against him, the power of CNN, the power of MSNBC, and you still beat all of that? 
here's the thing. So, so there was a film out called, there's a film out rather, The Apprentice, starring, um, I think it's Jeffrey Strong and, um, oh gosh, what, what's his name? The guy from um, Sebastian Stan, Sebastian Stan, The Apprentice. And it's pretty much a hit job about how crazy and how Trump became this kind of egotistical, evil individual. I don't want to see that movie. The movie I want to see, Oliver Stone, what's up? The movie I want to see is this guy's political career. So the, the Trump movie I want to see is after these four years have hover on. That's the movie I want to see. I'm sorry. I don't want to see a movie about how, oh, this guy's such a crazy guy and this is what he used to do to guys in New York. No, I want to, see, because this is fascinating. So as a guy who loves history, is really into history, the history of leaders, nations, you know, reading the book. I always, I always recommend you guys read the book called The Prince by Machiavelli. Just talking about society, leaders, governments, and just about how governments and just the nature of politics doesn't really change. And things really stay the same throughout years because they're just intrinsic things that maintain within how people rule and how leaders operate. This is fascinating to me. Because this just it's 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 like a lesson in human psychology. It's just a lesson as to how people think. Because I just thought that there's no way this guy is gonna be leader again. I was shocked he even ran again. After everything that happened on January 6th, after the being convicted, where he almost went to jail, I was like, there's no way he's gonna run again. So the fact that he ran again and he won. The Electoral College, the popular vote. Trump is going to have a field day these four years. Deservedly so. If I'm Trump, I'll be worse. <laughs> if I'm Trump, I'm like, mate, I will do, I will do worse. If you're CNN or you're MSNBC, prepare for hell. Prepare for hell. I'm not, I'm not answering you. I don't have to speak speak to you. Now, boom. I just won the electoral college and I just won the popular vote. So you can't even say, ah. Oh, so ev I this was a W with a big, massive W. So for Trump, he can do and say whatever the heck he wants. And if he votes for him, don't you dare complain. Now, you, you don't get to complain. If he is insulting, he's dismissive, he goes crazy and goes on a hinge and just puts forth the craziest policies. Don't you dare complain. Because Trump has earned the right to do whatever he wants. Whatever he wants. Um, it is, it's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. We'll, we'll get back to, to, to Trump. So let me, let's... I said this on the live bit before. Not a strong candidate not charismatic. I remember watching the Democratic convention and I was like, Michelle Obama seems realer, more likable. You can connect with her. Kamala, no. You were chosen as Biden's VP, primarily because you were good friends with Biden's son. You were then given the presidency that you did not earn. She ran on anti-Trump. And that was always a risk because I said that it could pay off. But here's the thing. I am not a political expert. There are people who are paid far more and there are people who are far more experienced who should be more knowledgeable than me. So me as a guy who doesn't have anywhere near the kind of political experience as his demo bricks have said that, okay, anti-Trump could work. It could work. But this is a risk. But for you guys who are far more experienced there than me, who should have the pulse of your nation and your country better than me, and a feel for what your country is thinking than me, should have known that anti-Trump isn't strong enough. That you should have known that these four years, people were not happy. And your ignorance to knowing that people were not happy under Biden showed that if people were unhappy under Biden and you we're able to fill the pulse of the nation in this last four years, then you would know that we have to go radically different from anything associated with Biden. Radically different. And what is needed is something that represents something completely, completely different from Biden. 
which is why the, this, the two big mistakes that the Democrats made, the, the two big mistakes. The first one was Biden stayed on too, too long. Because Biden would have lost. Now, he would not have lost this battle. He would have lost. He stayed on too long. First mistake. And he didn't step down quickly enough. The second big mistake, and I said this at the start, they didn't have a runoff. Because if Kamala went up against, say, Gavin Newsom or any of these far more interesting candidates, she'd lose. 100% she'd lose. And if somebody is vindicated, it's RFK Jr. Because Robert Kennedy Jr., he got screwed over by the Democrats. You see, what you learn, and this is what I learned by, this is my, like, my, my favorite rock, like, no, forget it, one of my favorite bands of all time, Rage Against the Machine. So what Rage Against the Machine taught me was, there are no good guys here. Because you think, Democrats, good guys, Republicans, bad guys. But what Rage Against the Machine, the band taught me was, the Democrats are just as evil as the Republicans. And the Democrats are just as corrupt as the Republicans. Because through the Democrats' corruption, you screwed over Bernie Sanders, you screwed over Robert Kennedy Jr. And you do not have a full unbiased runoff where everybody has a chance to make their case to lead the party. So for that, for what you did to Bernie Sanders and what you did to Robert Kennedy Jr., you deserve this. Because Democrats, this is a total beatdown. Because people think, that's not about Kamala. They've lost the Senate and I think they're about to lose the House. So this is lose the presidency, lose the popular votes, lose the, lose the um, House and lose the Senate. So this could be a total beatdown. A total beatdown. So this is about Democrats. You deserve this. This, 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 this is karma. Now let's break down the, the, these polls. So don't, don't, don't talk about black men. Don't talk about black men. Because as you can see from the polls, it's 1%. It's two main things, and this is what people have been talking about. White women, shout out to the Karens out there, and Latino men. Those are the two main demographics. And my thing is, because in my video I said that I believe women are going to swing this, this, this vote. So for that demographic of a white woman, I think it was a case of a lot of white women are just natural Republican. And again, it's that assumption. And it's the assumption that's filled with Hillary Clinton. Oh my gosh, it's Hillary. Of course women are going to go, go in their droves. So what's happened with Hillary is what happened here. Don't assume that because Hillary is a woman, they'll vote for her. So if women are not in their droves going to vote for Hillary Clinton, a white woman, what makes you think that they will come in their droves and vote for a half Indian, half black woman. But what is so crazy about this though is the reproductive rights issue and the abortion issue. The fact that that was on the table and you saw Kamala's viewpoints and Trump's viewpoints, that is what is fascinating. That is, that, that is fascinating, which is what I said about Trump. When Trump does what he does with regards to abortion and reproductive rights, for those white women that voted for Trump, you can't complain. You see, that's why I wish that, I know this could never happen, but I wish that there was like a device where when people walk, it tells you who they voted for. So when Trump does what he does with reproductive rights and with ab ab abortion, there should be a thing that shows those white women who voted for, for Trump. So when he does that, those white women who voted for Trump don't need to complain. Because this is what he voted for. So if what he does affects you or you're in a situation where your reproductive rights or abortion somehow affects you negatively, this is what he voted for. And you have to accept it. <laughs> you have to accept it. So that is interesting, though. The, the interesting one is, of course, Latino men. And what's, and this is why it is so good to have this hangout. And we're going to have another live show. And it's really good because, again, look, it a, a, a smart man thinks he knows everything. A wise man knows that he knows nothing and wants to learn. I'm a guy that wants to learn. So what's also good is speaking to other Latino people who were giving me insight that I did not know. So speaking to other Latinos that obviously on the live show was 
Latinos are not a monolith and they don't all stick to together and they'll be the first to snitch. So that whole Puerto Rico incident that we thought, oh my gosh, this is the sledgehammer. A lot of Latinos were like, I'm not from Puerto Rico. So why does that bother me? Oh, I'm a, I'm a Peruvian. I'm a Colombian. I'm from Mexico. I'm from um, Bolivia. I'm from Chile. Why does that affect me? They didn't insult Peru or Chile or Bolivia or Colombia or Paraguay. So why should that affect me? <laughs> you know. And so for and for a lot of Latino men, and I sort of because see, this is similar to Niger, a bit similar to Nigerians as well. When you leave a country that is so messed up and is so insane, you double and triple down on patriotism of the country that you've moved to. And I see this similar to Nigerians, where you leave Nigeria, which is a, a messed up situation, you move either to an England or America, and you are fully patriotic because you never want to go back, because you know what you, you, you left. So for all these Latino men, they're like, bro, Trump just represents something that I'm willing to, to fight for. And it's specifically when it's... So that thing, whole thing about the border, again, the more you know, and the more you learn from talking to people who have far more knowledge than I knew. And for people who were educating me was, yeah, Latino guys, they'll be the first to snitch on people who are here illegally. And for Latino men, it was like, oh, say whatever you want. I am not triggered by, oh, we're going to shut the border and take people away. They're like, I came here legally. And people who are here illegally should not be here. And that is a fair point. If I suffered... To come here legally, why should we be giving a pass to people who are here illegally? It's a fair point. It's a fair point. Um, this is going to be a fascinating four years. It's going to be a fast Because just as, again, as somebody who just likes to watch history and just looking at world powers, political powers, and just... Because, again, this is what people need to understand. I, I, and I hate when people say, you are not American. Why are you talking about U.S. politics? This is not about America. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry to bring it to you. It's not about America. This is about the world. This is about the world. So, yes, that's one aspect that I can speak on is what it means for Americans in America. That's one aspect I can speak on. But what I can speak on is North Korea, Russia, Ukraine, Gaza, Israel, and the knock-on effect that it could have on the rest of the world. That's I can speak on because last I checked, I live on planet Earth. And as I said again, the UN is a useless organization. America runs the UN. America is the world power. And what they say goes. And what they say and do affects the rest of the world. The UN is irrelevant. Forget those clowns. America runs things. And Trump, ooh, 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 we. Trump, this time, you can't say anything to this dude. <laughs> Bro, when Trump steps into that G7, when he steps into UN and when he jumps, he steps into these summits, he he's, he's, he's gonna be ten times worse. He's, bro, he might just he might just pimp slap people in, in public. Bro, bro, I will not be surprised if anybody says anything to him, he pimp slaps someone at those at those summits. Because for Trump is like, bro, I'm back. After every they tried to put me in jail. They tried to vilify me. They laughed at me. They said there was no chance for me to, to come back. The mainstream media has completely done a hit job on me, and I'm back. Boom. But one thing I love about this, yeah, and, and I, I, I'll end here. One thing I love about this, and then we'll end here, and then is, and this is, I think, the, the thing I love the most about this win. This is the thing I love the most about this win, which is celebrities are irrelevant. Oh, we have some crews. We've got Brad Pitt. Oh, DiCaprio. Di Mate, DiCaprio, you, you're, a, you're a creep who sleeps with an underage woman to begin with. And you pretend to be other people. George Clooney, you pretend to be other people. Beyonce and Taylor Swift, you sing. <laughs> Bro, I have a family to look after. I'm trying to make sure that ends can, can meet. What the, what the hell do I care about what DiCaprio or Taylor Swift or Beyonce has to freaking say? Or what <laughs> Cardi B has to say? Heck no. So it just shows you that celebrities, you're irrelevant. And what I always try to remind people is don't obsess with celebrities. You sing for a living. Sing. 
You act for a living. Act. Feel free to have whatever political view you have, but don't think that whatever you say politically will have any sway as to what I vote. I'll still buy your music. I'll still, so Eminem, shout out Eminem. I'll still buy your songs. Eminem, I don't give a damn what you think about politically. So yeah, cool. Quality rapper, yes. But I don't give a damn what, what, what you say. Well, actually, you know, <laughs> Eminem in 2024 is a bit crazy. But so, so, but um, yeah, celebrity means nothing. Like, there was that whole Avengers thing with Scarlett Johansson and Don Cheadle and Mark Ruffalo where they were trying to now energize guys to, to vote and they thought, oh my gosh, because we're so famous and we're celebrities, we're going to sway the votes because we are celebrities and we're super famous and we are part of the elite. Check out the popular vote. <laughs> so guys are like, hey, yeah, shoot, Avengers, cool. Go act. Go, go make a movie. Go freaking fly. This is real life here. And in real life, you celebrities, you are irrelevant when it comes to real life issues that affect me. Guys, buckle up. Buckle up. Buckle up for... <laughs> Guys, these four years. Woo-wee! Wow. Guys, remember, sub subscribe and join us for a live freaking breakdown on Thursday. This is going to be interesting. A live breakdown. Please join us for a live breakdown on Thursday. Peace.